Welcome again to Homemade. I'm your host, Jared Brown, and I'm glad to have you with me here today. I'm just so excited about you dropping by and spending a little time with us. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get right on into our program for today. We're going to be talking about something, one of my favorites. I had a friend, uh, a good friend, actually, uh, at church that uh, has been wanting to make uh, my salmon patties. I told her I was going to put this on the video, uh, send it to her that way. Uh, she'll be able to do that. And I hope she enjoys it, her and her family. I know they will. We're going to go ahead and I hope you enjoy this well. Uh, i tell you what we might uh, going to do here today. Uh, let me get one more item. I'm going to have to have, just getting everything laid out here. I'm going to have to step over here and get a knife. All right. Didn't have one of those out yet. I'm going to go ahead and show you what we got. We're going to be making today. Salmon patties, and some of you may have remembered this from when you were a kid. Some of you may still make it. Um, one of my favorites, uh, we do this uh, pretty regular around our household, uh, and I like to do them myself. And uh, we'll use uh, the pink salmon out of the can. I don't reckon it would matter if you used fresh salmon. This tends to run cheaper, so that's the reason we use it. Also, I have another great uh, thing that we use that makes these just as good, actually, to me, uh, I like them better. Uh, my wife prefers the salmon. She likes salmon a whole lot. But we will go uh, and do uh, activity called gigging. And what we gig for is sucker. And uh, it's coming up, getting close to that time of year uh, right now. So uh, maybe we'll get to go out and take some uh, footage of that. My son really enjoys doing that, him and some of his friends. Uh, maybe I'll get to get out with them this year and we'll uh, show you the process of taking those fish. Sucker is mostly known as a trash fish uh, that comes up into the creeks uh, from the river. And it usually happens in uh, late February, early March, on up into a little later March and April. Uh, as it warms up, it's cold. Yes, you get in the creeks and you wade and you uh, get those fish. But uh, we'll tell you more about that. And then I take those and I, I process them. I have a jar sitting over there somewhere, but we'll save that for another video. Looking at what we have today, looking at these salmon, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to use uh, just one can. I'm just going to do a small batch. Um, if you've got a larger family, you may want to double this recipe. Use two cans and double all the rest of the ingredients. Uh, very simple ingredients. We're just going to use flour, uh, cornmeal, eggs. I'm going to put a little bit of lemon in there. Uh, some green onions. I'm going to dice those up for you. Uh, and also, uh, we'll be using salt and pepper, things like that. And I'm going to do a little special. I guess I'll call this Cajun. Uh, style because we're going to use uh, some Cajun style seasoning. I, I've gotten a habit where I put this in just about everything and it makes real good tasty. It works in this as well. Uh, one variation that you can use on this uh, that I'm not going to be using today, but you very well could, and I do do this sometimes. i uh, just not in the mood for it today. I'll take a sleep with just regular saltine crackers. Uh, leave them in the pack gently. I'm not going to do these to show you because I don't want to ruin them, but gently crush them up real fine. You could put them in a Ziploc bag and crush them up. Uh, uh, but if you're real careful, uh, you can crush them up right here in the bag and use this for your uh, some of your meal uh, and uh, some of your flour as well. Uh, that makes a tasty treat too because it already has salt in it. And if you like a little extra salt, that is a way to, it will increase the salt intake. So if you do use these, you may want to cut back on the amounts of salt. All right, let, letting go of that, uh, let's dive right on. I guess the first thing we need to do probably is go ahead and get some oil heating up because that's the key thing. So we're just going to take uh, just some regular, just vegetable oil. You could use corn oil. You could use any type of oil that you choose or whatever you have available. Uh, you could use Crisco. You could use lard. Uh, doesn't matter to me. Anything to cook it in. If you want to be a little bit healthier, you can actually use olive oil. Just do remember that olive oil uh, doesn't have a quite as high as a cooking tent, so keep your temperature just a little bit lower. Uh, but no need for getting too hot on it. We're just going to take and add this oil. We're going to add it to about, fill up, you know, about a quarter up the side of the pan here. And I'm using my, one of my black uh, cast iron skillets and one of my favorite things to cook in. Just going to add that little bit of oil and go ahead. And I'm going to add a little bit more because this does soak up the oil just a little bit. Uh, so we may have to do it in two batches. Uh, so I'll just put a little bit extra in there. Uh, one thing to keep in mind that you want to do, uh, be very careful that as you do this, 
that oil needs to be hot enough. If it's not hot enough when you start, uh, it will actually soak up into the salmon patties and you don't want that real heavy greasy uh, flavor if you, even though you're cooking it in oil, if you let that oil be hot enough when you put it in there, it won't soak it up as bad. So I encourage you to do that. So while our oil is heating up, the next thing we want to do, we're going to go ahead and get this can open. Uh, nothing special. You could use any brand. This happens to be Double Q Pink Wild Caught Alaskan Salmon. It's what they had at our local grocery store. Uh, the weight is 14 and three quarters of an ounce. Um, so we'll go ahead and show you what to do with this. The very first thing we want to do I'm going to go ahead and take some of these ingredients out of this bowl because I'm going to need it. I'm going to just start right here and I'm going to drain this bowl because I'm going to save this fluid just in case uh, I'm going to pour it off into this bowl. I may use some of it. Uh, it is uh, something that you can do if your uh, patties get a little dry. You can add some of this fluid and this is great fluid to add back in it. Drain that out just a little bit. Okay. Here's where we're going to get a little messy. Uh, now this, I mean, this is not really a required step, something I've always done. I like to do this, uh, but it's not necessary. Uh, Simon, when it's uh, processed and put in these cans, um, what they do, they pressure can it. And the same thing I do, as I was mentioning with the sucker or any type of uh, pressure canned fish that you would have, uh, when you pressure count them, the bones, that's the reason it's hard to eat suckers. I, I have heard uh, some folks uh, when I was a, a younger child talk about how they would take a uh, sucker and fry them on the bank. You couldn't bring them home and fry them. You had to fry them immediately. They say it was the trick to getting the bones and there was a certain type of cut. I've tried it. I've not been very successful, but pressure can them gets rid of, softens the bone. I won't say get rid of them to where you can manage. But what we're going to do here, though, I don't particularly want that bone, and I don't like, if you'll see this little bit of flesh here, I'm just going to lightly peel that off, toss that away, and as that was folded up, that was the skin that was on the fish. No, look, most people leave that in, no problem with leaving that in. Matter of fact, I'll leave a little some here and there, but like that big, uh, there's a, you can't see it there, but got a little bit of fat on that. Uh, just go ahead and discard that. But what we're really after, the main thing we're looking for right here, is the bones. I'm going to show you how this is. It's very simple. Find your place where it opens up, and there's bones. These are the big bones that are the main problem. Uh, little round bones, and then it has little small pin bones off to the side. Get I, That's like the bat bone, I would assume. I just pull that out, and that large piece is ready to go. Pull this little bit of dark skin off here. And like I said, this is all not exactly necessary 100%. Uh, just kind of peel these little bones out. I mean, these bones are just going to add a little bit of crunch to it. They are not going to choke you or anything, which I mean, I guess anything could choke you, but uh, not, nothing abnormally like if you were eating fried fish or something like that and you found a bone in a fillet. Let's cleaning this up just a little bit. Getting some more of these bones out, getting down to just the meat. Now, like I said, a lot of people just eat as is. There will be some bones, even with what I'm doing. I'm not trying to spend a whole lot of time with this. I'm not too overly concerned. I just mashed that up just a little bit. I think I got it about like I want on that piece. This is a little messy part, but you can always wash your hands. Don't be scared to get in there and do what needs to be doing. We're going to clean this one up just a little bit. I think that's about going to get us. That worked out rather nice. All right, there is the meat. We got, you know, every time you throw that away, you probably got 12 uh, ounces of meat there. Just a good guess. Didn't weigh them. I could weigh them, but I'm not going to. Now, I'm gonna rinse my hands right here from this. Now, we're not through getting our hands dirty, but I got some more ingredients so I've gotta get into. I'm just gonna give them a quick rinse right there. Give them a good dry here. And let's go ahead and look at something else. Now, I'm gonna set our juice aside. We may or may not use that. What I'm gonna do right quick, I'm gonna go ahead and take uh, just a lemon. 
you don't have to do this. I like to do this. I had my family likes to just eat lemons and put it in our tea and things like that. They were some cut up in the refrigerator. I said, I'm going to go ahead and squirt a little bit of lemon in this. Since I have it there, I'm just going to catch that seed there. Just add it real good. Anytime you got any type of fish, lemon's always good with it. All right, so we just got that going. Now, I've got out here two eggs uh, and also uh, a quarter cup of cornmeal and a half a cup of flour. Uh, now, what I'm going to do with that is uh, going to go ahead. Our whole oil, let me see where it's at. It's not quite ready yet, so we've got a little time. I'm going to go ahead and begin to start mixing this. Uh, let me step over here. I don't like this knife that I grabbed. I'm going to get a different one out of my drawer. I'll be right back with you. All right, we're back. So let's go ahead and look at this. Uh, I guess first things I would like to do is go ahead and take these onions. Now we're not, it's not going to take me any. These are, uh, was in the refrigerator. They need using. Uh, you could use regular on onions. I'm just using these because uh, they need using. Uh, probably, my guess would be maybe one or two. Probably two because I like onion. These are getting uh, where they need use. They're not bad, uh, but I'm not going to be able to use the whole thing. I'm going to pick out the best ones of them here. And it's really just the wrong time of year. Uh, four onions like this. We're coming up in spring, so we're just right down the road from getting some good ones. Those are kind of wilted at the top, but that's okay. We'll trim these bottoms off just a little bit. And we're going to pull this bad, what would you say bad, but outside layer off. Uh, get them good and slick. Get them like we want them. Yeah, it's probably going to take, I'm going to say, I'm going to use two of these. I'm going to chop this off about right here. The reason it's getting a little bad. Uh, that's one. Uh, let me find one more nice one here. That I think we can make good out of. I'm going to say that's going to be about how much we need for that. Let's chop this little bottom off, root system off here. I'm going to let it go on up about right there. This looks like this will be plenty of onions. Now I'm going to go ahead and kind of split these. I like to do that to make little finer pieces. Hold those together. And we're just going to thinly slice them. I'm not no professional slicer by no means. And uh, we're going to use all the way up into the green parts here. Nothing wrong with that. Give it a little prettiness and it's just as good. We call these green onions around here. Uh, we could call them by different names, green onions or what have you. We always just call them green onions. I think that's going to be plenty. All right. So side and these other onions. We're just going to take those and put those right in our mixture. Yes, that looks like about the perfect amount. I just want it to flavor that good, and when you get a good bite of a good patty, you've got that onion. Uh, crunch in it and uh, we'll go ahead and put those in those that looks about the right amount now I'm not measuring all this uh, there are a few parts of it that I have measured out uh, when it comes to the egg and when it comes to all the ingredients it's not it's not rocket science it's nothing that you have to have a certain recipe for it's not, or at least I don't some may um, but I do have a few ingredients that I like to keep consistent with it. And one of those uh, is the amount of cornmeal. I like to use a quarter cup of cornmeal. I'm going to go ahead and put this in. Let's put that in. I'm going to go ahead and take one egg. The recipe with one can, one egg should be it. I get to mixing this and I see that it's not holding together good, I'll add another egg. You can't really go wrong. That's why you don't have to measure this. This is good fresh eggs right from the, our chicken hen's house. Uh, we're just going to take this egg and there's another. A lot of people don't like this part. Ooh, it's gooey, but you know what? It's so good in the end. 
we're just going to mix this up. I'm keeping one hand out of it this time. A little bit more cleanness. I wash my hands before I start. So it's okay. You're feeding your family. That's the name of our uh, program here that we're trying, our channel that we're trying to go with is Home Made. And that's what we like to do. Everything homemade. I'm not going to say that everything that was done in the past was the best way. So I don't want to just say old timey or old fashioned way because there's been great developments in our country. There's been great things that has happened. And sometimes I find myself adopting new ways of doing things. No doubt for that. I'm not a stickler on just the old pattern. But on the other side of that, I also think that there's a lot of great things that come out of our past that we need to keep in mind. And a lot of things that we learn can learn from our elders. I consider myself to be still a young man. Um, even though I'm getting older and older every day, pushing, uh, getting my family raised, almost got that done. My kids are newly grown. Uh, and uh, before long, it will be just me and my wife here at home. But I've always enjoyed speaking with elderly people, those that knew something about things, I learned things from them, watched and observed, talked to them, spent a little time from them. We always encourage you to do that. It's always a big blessing in my life. Now, so far, that, that amount of egg is pretty good. Uh, it's a little wet, so we're not needing any juice. We're going to go ahead and start adding a little bit of this flour. Now, I've got a half cup. I may or may not use all of this. I'm just going to use a little bit. Then I'm going to mix it up some. And we'll see where we're at on our consistency. And then we will go back and adjust it as needed. So I says, why don't you put it in a bowl? Mix it with a spoon. I can do that. Uh, I tend that you can really get this incorporated a little bit better by hand. Uh, so that's the reason I'm doing it the way I am. All right, we're going to be able to put a little more flour in. I can tell that's going to be... I'm still going to save just a little bit. Yeah, we're getting there now. You squeeze it right through your hands. That's a little messy. I don't think I want to do it different. Well, go ahead and do it different. That'll be fine. Uh, it won't change a thing. Stir it however you want to mix it. Um, I wouldn't use nothing like electric or anything like that because it might change the texture. Let's see what I think it's going to need the rest of that flour. So that wound up being the whole half cup of flour and a quarter cup of cornmeal. Really the only thing we've got left, this is sticking together rather nicely. Okay, I think that's going to be about right. Just simply do this. And we've got a couple more ingredients that we're going to put in this. And uh, then we'll, our oil maybe will be ready. And we'll get them on the frying and show you how beautiful these will turn out. And your family, if they like salmon, if they like good old-fashioned, good home eating, they will love this right here. I promise you that. Okay. Now, our next thing to look at, I'm going to get my towel. Uh, let's add some salt, pepper, and our Creole seasoning. Those ingredients, we will get those added and mixed up. From this point, for mixing this, I'm just going to get a fork and continue finishing mixing. I've got it to the consistency that I want. So we're going to come right back. We can get that door shut. All right, we're back with that. And for the rest, because it has to be uh, incorporated as well, we're going to take and uh, I'm going to say a uh, quarter cup of, or excuse me, not cup, quarter teaspoon of our pepper. Just going to open the can. And that's going to be pretty close to being what we want to go with. If I wasn't doing this video, trying to give you some measurements, I would not measure this. Uh, I would just do it from what I thought as I go. I'm not very big on measuring. 
I've got that pepper. I'm gonna say, uh, probably double that on the salt. So that's a quarter. We'll go a half teaspoon of salt. You can adjust these for your preferences. If you use the crackers, you know, you may want to stick with just that quarter uh, because uh, they're gonna have, especially unless you use non-salted crackers, and you could do that, uh, they would have it, there's uh, the saltiness on the cracker as well. So you wouldn't want to overdo it. Be careful with that. So that's salt, pepper, onions, egg, quarter cup of cornmeal, half a cup of flour. Look at here. These are turning out nearly perfect. Get that pepper incorporated in that salt. And one more ingredient, and I can't help it. I've got to go with a good full um, half teaspoon, uh, or I may cheat. I'll look at it when I get started. I love Cajun seasoning. I love Cajun seasoning. Well, and that one wasn't quite full of my, my, my box is just nearly out. Oh, there was a good half. So that's about three quarters of a teaspoon. That's going to give it a good Cajun -y flavor. I love that, love that. Hand spices. That's the best uh, type of seasoning for everything. I mean, we put it on. You talking about when our corn comes in, uh, when we grow corn, uh, I like to, out of the garden, when we have that fresh roasting air, if we bring in, we'll cook that stuff and we'll sprinkle it with some, I'll put some butter on it, and sprinkle it with that Cajun seasoning. If you ain't ever tried that, I'm telling you, you're missing something. And it'll, it'll get them lips a glowing. It'll get you a little warmed up, uh, but uh, it's definitely a treat. Get all that incorporated real good, good and even. You don't want no big spots of seasoning in this piece and none in the other. So mixing it is the way to do that. We've got to get our hands dirty one more time, but they won't be as dirty because we've got a perfect consistency here on this. Now, let me check my oil. The way I'm going to do that, I'm just going to take, uh, get me a little drop of the water here on my fan. You hear that? Did not have to have the extra egg. We did not need the, the juice. Uh, and that's sounding pretty good. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Take just a little piece, put it in there. Got bubbles coming up around it. We're going to go ahead and, we're going to go ahead and start patting these out and making them. All right, you don't want too big of a patty. Uh, something like that. Uh, you make it as big as you want. Hey, it's up to you. I'm not going to tell you how to do it. But that's what you're looking for. See how that stays together. Makes a good patty. I'm going to slide that right in our oil. Let that start frying up. Look here. We're going to go right back in with another one. Um, maybe a little big on this one. Let's put a little bit of that out. I don't like them too, too big. And like I said, if we were using our sucker uh, that we have put up, and I'll do a video at some point to show you how to do that too, uh, I would do it the same way. I would probably follow the same recipe and do them the exact same way. This is going to be a good little meal for tonight for me and my wife. I think I'll make a can of my pinto beans. I'll show you that. I, I've got it sitting over there. Um, you said, well, why do you have a can of pinto beans? Why don't you just buy them from the store? And we do some. Um, but I like to keep a couple of months of food ready in case we was to have a job layoff or something to change in the financial status of our family. I like to have a couple of months of food that I can rely on where I won't have to go uh, and purchase those items if I don't have the money. And you said, well, dry beans last a long time, and you're exactly right. But I'm working right now. I work a full-time job. My wife works a full-time job. i uh, got one daughter that's a nurse. She's getting married soon. She'll be out of the house. Uh, i got a son who's nearly grown, ready to graduate high school. Uh, so we don't have time. We're very busy. So I like to pressure cook my pinto beans and have those that would be good with this meal i'm going to show you some of those those are just cooking right away got a couple more here that i'm going to make we're just going to brown these on both sides um, i mean you don't have to worry about getting them done there's nothing in here 
the egg would be the only thing that's got to cook, and well, that's nothing. Uh, because the salmon is really, believe it or not, it's really pre-cooked. Make one big one here. Just use up what I got. My pan's about full as well. That pan's just cooking right away. That oil is just at the right level. I'm gonna put this in the pan, wash my hands, and get back with you. There we go. That worked out just right. And that's just the right amount uh, for us to get supper tonight. Uh, I'm gonna make some uh, mashed potatoes. Do a video on that sometime. Probably won't do that today, but then uh, yeah, before long, I'll make some, show you a video on how I make my mashed potatoes. I'm gonna show you those pinto beans. Look at here. Look how nice these are. Uh, these are wonderful. They came out of canned beans, and you can make a lot of canned beans out of, some, of you know, a two-pound bag of dry beans or four pounds. We buy it in bulk. Uh, I also do a lot of my beans like this. This is sealed. Uh, this has been oven canned. I'll do a video and show you how to do that as well. That's got a 20 to 25 year shelf life. I'll probably never touch that. Um, uh, something else I was going to show you was that uh, this is what the, this this is uh, this is uh, been in uh, over since last spring. Uh, it's ready to eat at any time. You say, well, it don't look too appealing. Well, things in a jar, if they're in a can, your salmon look just like this when you open it up. This is good. This is just as good as the salmon, but this is called sucker, uh, and I'll show you that sometime as well. But I think I'll make some macaroni and cheese to go with this tonight. Pinto beans. Uh, just these salmon patties, good old mashed potatoes. I'm telling you, we're going to have a great meal. We're going to look at finishing frying these up. Just going to walk over here to the stove and see which ones of these. Oh, they've already got a good crusty bottom. And I've got I've got a camera rigged up, a little GoPro, but I'm not sure the quality of what it's going to look like. I, I'm not real good with a GoPro. I'm barring my sons, actually, uh, and uh, hopefully I'm getting a good shot of this. If not, you'll just have to take my word for it. We'll plate these up here in just a minute because they're getting done, uh, turning out just at the perfect level. And this hasn't taken a very long time, just a very short time. You can have your family fed a very, very good supper. And something that enjoy. I like that onion shining through. These are very pretty. These are going to be very good. And uh, just move those around a little bit in that oil. Could have used just a little bit less oil. I'm going to go ahead and get a couple of paper towels here. Uh, get a plate out. We'll plate these up. So I said paper towels for. Well, anytime you fry something and a lot of grease, I like to pull off a couple of paper towels, fold them up, set them on my plate. When I pull that food out, then I will have uh, something that catches most of the grease. The, the, the intent of this is not to try to uh, have it so greasy. Uh, I like the flavor of the grease. I didn't like the flavor of lard, but it's not very good for me. I like. I even do this with olive oil. It's just as good to me. It, it may have just a little bit different flavor, but it's just as good. That would be healthy for you, uh, whatever oil you like to use for your health sake. By all means, I don't always cook the healthiest. Uh, my doctor obviously knows that because uh, my, my life is not the healthiest. I need to work on some of those things. But hey, I enjoy eating. I enjoy cooking. This channel is not only about cooking. We're not going to spend all of our time here in the kitchen. Matter of fact, in the kitchen cooking is not what I like the most. I like going outside and cooking. You said, oh, on the grill, on the smoker. Yeah, I enjoy those. But no, I'm talking about over an open fire, down in the ground. Uh, I've got a couple of recipes I'm going to be getting up for you before too long. Uh, I make a, I make a what I, I guess I call it a chicken roast where I'll take a whole chicken and put it in my Dutch oven. And I will dig a hole and I'll show you how to do that. And we'll cook that thing in the ground with some potatoes and carrots and onions. And it is just out of this world great. Also, I cook a, a couple of different desserts down in the ground. Uh, so we'll, we'll be doing some of that for you as well. Just a couple of things to look forward to. Let's go ahead and check our uh, salmon patties here. If you're liking these videos, won't you do me a favor? Why don't you uh, go ahead and click that like button or subscribe. Click that little bell. That way you can stay 
up on all the videos that we're going to be putting out. We're just getting started. Uh, we want to make a whole family of this. Uh, as we mentioned, we're called Homemade. It's all about projects we do around here at the house. I'm trying today after I finish this video, if I get time, because uh, I am pushing it to being too late in the year. Uh, I'm thinking about going out and uh, filming, uh, trimming some of my scuppernine vines, uh, showing you how to do that. Some of you may be interested in that. Uh, we have scuppernines that we grow as well as some grapes. We don't trim the grape vines, but we do the scuppernines, and I love those bronze, big fry. Uh, Scup of dimes every year. We enjoy that. Just gonna let this finish cooking and we're almost there. As a matter of fact, some of those are ready to take up as we speak. We're gonna go ahead and get these took up for you. Just want to cook them till they're golden brown and they will be done. Drain as much grease as off as you can. I'm gonna play that two to three of these is ready and the rest are still cooking. Some of the first ones that I put in are ready to eat now. Just get them a nice, pretty golden brown. Look how well they stay cut uh, together. Drain a little bit of that grease off. We'll leave those other three in there to cook. I've got three out. We're going to go ahead and let this wrap us up for today. If you've enjoyed this, like we mentioned, go ahead and like and subscribe. Got some comments if you would like to. See us do certain types of videos or cook some certain items or some, something you'd like us to do. Uh, we're going to be doing lots of things. We Sometimes we may just carry you along on some of our fishing trips. My wife is a very avid, I guess you can't say fisherman, I guess you would call her a fisherwoman. Uh, but I'm going to tell you, growing up with her and my son, we, we didn't have a lot of money and things like that. We'd have a canoe, we didn't have fancy bass boats and things like that, but we would get out there. Watching them, I, I mean, most of the time, I wouldn't even fish. I, I do like to fish, but just watching them, uh, not really fuss and fight, but just kind of brag over one another, uh, having their competitions. And the sad thing is, and he's a great, wonderful fisherman himself and a very avid hunter, uh, loves riding horses, lots of activities he does, but she could flat out out fishing every time. And uh, she has a technique that I've never seen by anybody and how it works, I do not know. You can't explain it, but she does catch a lot of fish. So we, we might carry along on a couple of trips like that. The sun's getting a little older and we may have already missed uh, getting him to go out with us on that. But uh, we're going to go ahead and get on out of here. We look forward to some of those things with you. Hey, it's been good to have you here at our home today. We we'll hope you'll come back next video. Enjoy it. Until then, may the good Lord bless you and we hope you have a great day.